Welcome to our technology forecast presentation for the Touch Temperature Multilayer Coating. I'm Laura Willis. I'm Ben Krause. And I'm Sharon Albert. This technology forecast will explore the present status of appliances, automobiles, and motorcycles in relation to burn-free surfaces and predict the future advancements that could exist for these industries. Background will be given on each of these industries along with selecting the following appliances for historical review. Ovens, stovetops, toasters, toaster ovens, heaters, and walk-in freezers, refrigerators. Although these components will be discussed in greater detail, they are not the only ones that will be mentioned in this forecast. Furthermore, there will be discussion on the advantages and disadvantages and limitations of the appliance automotive industries. This will be followed by technological applications that are forecasted for future use. In addition, pricing, sales, market share, break-even point, and rate of return data will be estimated for this technology. Finally, the information will be summarized and the conclusion will be stated. Touch temperature coating was invented by NASA engineer Eugene Unger to address an issue with devices being used in space reaching temperatures in excess of 120 degrees Fahrenheit. The original intent of the coating was to limit the heat from off-the-shelf electrical devices not designed for space usage while using them in space-based applications. This, in effect, extends the time that an astronaut can touch the item without pain, increasing the usefulness of safety of the devices. Touch temperature limits are defined for both hot and cold skin contact with objects in order to prevent pain and injury. There are several variables in this determination, such as the skin's temperature at the time of contact, the object's temperature, and the material makeup of the object. NASA has set the hot temperature touch limit based on the onset of pain at 111.2 degrees Fahrenheit. The cold temperature limit for the onset of pain is 59 degrees Fahrenheit. The requirements of the coating are to limit the skin temperatures below the pain threshold and to cause minimal loss of heat transfer. In order to limit the skin temperatures below the pain threshold, the coating must have low thermal, thermal mass and limit heat from the object to the skin by creating a heat resistance. This barrier is able to enhance safety without deteriorating the capability of the electronic device. The coating is a multi-layer sheet that can be placed over the exterior of the device, but ideally would replace the exterior surface of the device. Coating is made up of several sections, which include two aluminum sheets, acrylic adhesive, steel fins, and a high emissivity coating. One aluminum sheet acts as the outer heat transfer layer, and the other is the layer that is bonded to the equipment. The sheets are the same size and are sized to fit the outer heat transfer layer of the device. The acrylic adhesive bonds the metals and is thin enough that it does not affect the heat transfer in normal operation. The stainless steel fin is 0.002 inches thick and is 0.011 inches tall, and it acts like the main reducer of the heat flow. Finally, the high emissivity coating is applied to the outer sheet to improve the heat transfer. The prototype was made from aluminum from Coke cans with stainless steel ribs or fins between and adhered with acrylic glue to another piece of aluminum. The spacing between the layers is specific and it is unknown whether tweaking that spacing will change the integrity of the coating. The stainless steel creates reduction of heat while the aluminum is the heat conductor. The side next to the device remains hot while the other side, because of the steel, has reduced heat and therefore can be touched. In studies performed, the application of the coating increased the time a person could hold a bare 140 degree Fahrenheit item made of aluminum from 2.5 seconds to 2 minutes before the onset of pain. One of the limitations discussed is the weakness of the aluminum, which can be easily damaged if dropped. If the exterior surface is damaged, the integrity of the coating 
is not necessarily compromised unless the interior stainless steel ribs are crushed to the point that the outer surface and the inner surface touch. The use of aluminum, aluminum is not critically important as other materials such as stainless steel or brass can be used as the exterior to increase the strength of the coating. Commercial creation of this material might be assisted by the use of autoclaving to seal the glue used to adhere the three sections of the metal together. The technique of metal brazing, the process of heating metals to adhere them similar to soldering, could be used also in place of gluing sections together. This invention will not be patented, so the technology is available to use by anyone. There are numerous appliances that are categorized in this industry that have been in existence for several centuries. However, not until the 20th century did gas powered and self-contained electric household appliances materialize. The main reason for this was the almost extinction of the full domestic servant. In the early 1900s, appliances such as sewing machines, clothing, washers, refrigerators, and water heaters became available. Around 1800, an iron kitchen oven was developed that could heat several pots at one time using one heating source. Moreover, the heating level could be controlled individually. However, the one oven was too big for use in an average kitchen. Nonetheless, ovens evolved from the soot-free kerosene oven to the coal oven in 1833. Prior to the electric toaster, bread was toasted over an open fire with the use of a few simple tools. The electric toaster signified a major technological advancement. However, it has been in existence for only a little over 100 years. Even with electricity being introduced into homes across America, the feasibility of the electric toaster is still non-existent. In the past, before electricity, we burned wood to keep warm in our homes using fireplaces and wood burning stoves. Electricity produces light as well as heat. The initial electric heaters had long bulbs that were encased in small metal boxes. The bulbs produced a source of heat once they heated up. The electric heater was originally designed to convert energy into heat. Therefore, the initial design has changed very little over time. Prior to the use of mechanical refrigeration systems, snow and ice were used to keep foods cool. Historically, people dug holes in the ground and lined it with wood straw and packed it with snow and ice in order to refrigerate, freeze their food. The refrigeration process consists of eliminating heat from an enclosed area substance to reduce its temperature. Many of the appliances in use today in the appliance industry are made of stainless steel surfaces. Stainless steel is made out of low carbon steel that contains at least 10.5% Chromium. These appliances have the metallic finish that appears new and modern and is shiny. Stainless steel appliances can give a kitchen a more upscale and modern look. Another advantage is that the chromium reacts with oxygen to form an invisible barrier that prevents rust. Therefore, stainless steel appliances will not rust. Also, the same protective barrier that prevents stainless steel from rusting prevents bacteria and other germs from infiltrating the surface. This makes stainless steel appliances easier to clean and more hygienic. Furthermore, when the surface is nicked or scratched, the protective barrier forms in the crevices and prevents germs and bacteria from growing. This prevents the creation of unhealthy food preparation areas in the kitchen. Moreover, stainless steel will not stain or discolor. Therefore, there is no need to use harsh chemicals on stainless steel surfaces. This makes cleaning easier and safer for the environment, as well as better for the home. Another advantage of stainless steel appliances is that they are known to be quite durable. They can continue to look new throughout their lifespan. The history of the automobile can be tracked back to the 1769 with the development of the steam engine and automobiles that were able to transport human beings. Internal combustion engines running on fuel gas came into existence in 1806. This eventually led to the gasoline or petrol fuel 
internal combustion engine being introduced in 1885. However, in 1886, is considered the year in which the modern automobile was born. Motorcycle history begins after the 1850s. This was also marked by steam power and a single cylinder engine. Petroleum power motorcycles that ran on a light gasoline were kick started in 1885. In 1894, the first mark motorcycles became available for commercial use by the public. The best known car manufacturers in the world are Ford, Chrysler, Toyota, and Mitsubishi. Cars have become a must have item. They are used for pleasure, transportation of goods and people, as well as business purposes. Automobiles can come in all shapes, sizes, and colors. The auto industry has grown considerably since the end of World War II. Cars are now built to be a lot more elegant, comfortable, and spacious. They come equipped with more safety features and fuel efficient, powerful, bigger engines. This advantage is passed on to the consumer fueling competition that helps them get cheaper and more efficient performing vehicles. Due to the constant fluctuation in oil prices, hybrid vehicles have gained a strong foothold in the auto market today. They have helped to sustain the pace of the sales in the U.S. auto industry. The U.S. car industry is strong even though competition is becoming extremely fierce. Car manufacturers are reducing employee numbers due to lower sales volumes, more manufacturers are moving overseas in order to benefit from cheap cost of labor. However, this is causing the U.S. workers to lose much needed jobs. This will add to an increase in the U.S. unemployment rates. Auto manufacturers are merging their resources as another way to cut costs and maintain a competitive advantage by improving automobile production. Mergers of corporations are likely to reach global proportions in order to ensure the survival of the industry. The oil situation has caused manufacturers to seek out alternative fuel sources to power vehicles. Alternative fuel sources are needed in order to help repair and stop the deterioration of the environment. Although there have been many technological advances made in both the appliance and automotive industries, it is still room for improvement. People may want to consider all the surfaces that lead to potentially getting burned while using an appliance or working on an automobile or motorcycle. The introduction of this new technology could help prevent pain and suffering caused from burns with the application of its burn-free multi-layer coating. According to Alyssa Ann Roosh Burn Foundation, 69% of all burn injuries occur in the home. While 44% of burn injuries are flame-related, 9% of burn injuries are due to contact with a hot object. As previously discussed, the benefit of the touch temperature coating is to reduce the temperature of the surface in order to allow comfortable touch of that surface without risk of pain or skin damage. Keeping in mind the burn statistics, one use of this technology would be in heat applications specifically with heat generating appliances, both for home and commercial use. Several appliances, such as ovens, stovetops, toasters, toaster ovens, and heaters, would benefit from replacing all or part of their surfaces with the coating. There are many ways in which the coating could be applied to parts of an appliance to reduce the chance of burns to the skin. The stovetop on an electric flat cooktop could be replaced with the coating in order to prevent burns while still providing heat for cooking. There are several opportunities for the coating usage on the exterior or interior of an oven or toaster oven. Surfaces such as walls or doors of the oven can be replaced with the coating in order to prevent the user from burning arms or hands. The oven rack itself could be replaced with this material in order to reduce the risk of pain or burns from accidental touching. The exterior of these appliances could also be replaced with the coating, making touching the sides of an oven, the toaster oven, safer. As discussed earlier, this technology is not limited just to the use of aluminum. Other materials, such as stainless steel, brass, or another durable metal could be used. The use of this coating on an electric heater would make having a heater around less dangerous due to the risk of injury from accidental touching of the surface.
These changes are preventative measure measures to reduce the chances of adults or children burning themselves by touching these normally hot surfaces. Another area for usage of the multi-layer coating in heat applications is in the automotive application. One use of the technology we thought of would be to replace the car hood with the coating so that you wouldn't have to wait an extended period of time for your hood to cool off in order to be able to work on your vehicle. Remember that any durable metal can be used when creating the coating, although some of these parts are already made of stainless steel, such as exhaust pipes or car hoods. All of these parts can be improved by making the outer surface from the coating rather than from the usual materials. This improvement will prevent burns to hands and legs from touching these normally hot surfaces. While the coating was originally envisioned to be used to maintain safe touch temperatures for the use on hot surfaces, it will also work to keep the touch temperatures from being too cold to safely touch as well. This opens an area to explore for the use of cold applications. As discussed earlier, the cold te touch temperature limit is 59 degrees Fahrenheit before the onset of pain. Surfaces that are normally too cold to touch with bare hand can be replaced with the coating so that they will become safe to touch without pain or fear of injury, such as cold burns or frostbite. The coating could be used on the walls of a walk-in freezer or tools and metal materials used in a freezing compartment. In order to proceed with the mass production of this technology, it is important to investigate its potential use and profitability. By determining the potential cost and making price estimates, it would be possible to establish a goal to reach in terms of the number of units that must be sold. However, this can only be determined accurately if we first take a look at the industry and markets that will be targeted by implementing the coding into different products. These estimates will most likely be varied from the actual data, but as long as they're similar, they'll give us a good idea of how viable the product is. While the pricing structure for this technology is only an estimate, it will provide us with an idea of what to expect as businesses begin uh, using the coding. Um, so the basic prices we have here, um, and I'll go over those in a second, are the um, variable costs, fixed costs, and then the uh, price that we would set for the, the uh, materials. Um, so the first cost shown up here is um, for 175 is the cost of the aluminum. And um, just uh, by the way, the prices for these are in uh, square feet. So one unit would be a square foot. Uh, the acrylic transfer adhesive is 75 cents per unit. Um, and then the um, stainless steel, uh, it will be, which will be used for the outside as well as the fin, um, is $4.80. Um, and, and one thing we can do or thought about doing is using brass rather than stainless steel. Um, and that material is pretty similar in price, but just for the, the sake of the estimate, we went with the stainless steel. Um, the number up here is labor costs per square foot and then miscellaneous variable costs. So the total variable cost um, for the uh, material is $12.65 per unit. The uh, fixed costs, which include things like uh, rent insurance, um, is $2,800,000. And the price that we set uh, based on um, other types of uh, technologies that are similar that are used um, for, um, to stop the transfer of heat, we set at $20. Um, as mentioned earlier, the, the main target industries will be appliances and automobiles, um, but this could expand as more, um, you know, more companies become aware of the coding. Um, because of the relative newness of the technology, the main obstacles will not be competitors with the similar products, but instead convincing, convincing manufacturers that the value added from using the coding exceeds um, the cost they'll have to pay to add that in. The uh, target industries for the coating appliances and automobiles have had um, high volumes of sales in recent years, making both industries valuable partners for this technology. Uh, according to the U.S. Census Bureau, sales for consumer appliances and electronics has averaged about $8.5 billion per month over the last two years. And this number has continued to rise with um, population growth as well as growth in the housing market as people are using more appliances. Um, the automobile industry, especially in the United States, has experienced some volatility, um, but it's still uh, been steady enough in the tens of million do millions of do dollars that this could still um, work for, for that uh, industry. 
Um, the target market will be pretty general uh, due to the widespread use of the appliances and automobiles. Um, if the coating becomes something that's used worldwide, it would probably be something used more in developed countries rather than developing just because they'll have higher numbers of appliances and automobiles in use there. Um, and so the next, uh, the next number is the projected market share. Um, so with any new technology in business, usually you assume that that target uh, market share is pretty low. So um, for this um, estimate, we assume less than 1% for the target market share. Um, according to uh, the U.S. Census, 114,800,000 is the number of um, households in, as of 2010. And so uh, with this estimate, we basically assume that uh, which this is probably a low number, but just to be safe, we assume that each household has at least one appliance. Um, and so even with a half of a percent market share, um, we assume that the uh, coding will be able to surpass the break-even point. So the next section that we analyze is the break-even point. Break-even analysis is important because it gives us an idea of uh, the number of units that need to be produced in order to make the project worthwhile. Any additional units sold above the break-even point means the company makes a profit, while numbers below the break-even point means that it's a loss. Um, so using the same numbers that we had before, we have the fixed cost of 2,800,000, variable cost of 1265 per unit, and then the price of 20 per unit. Um, so X here is the break-even point. So using this equation um, of fixed costs divided by price minus a variable costs, um, we're able to, to reach a number of 380,952 as the break-even point. Um, so basically this number should be attainable due to the variety of the um, uses the coding will provide. The last metric we look at is the anticipated return. And while all the other um, things that we've looked at before are important, they all don't really matter if the company's not able to make a return. Um, so what we did is looked at um, a couple different um, scenarios and took a weighted average. The first one was if half a percent of households would use uh, the coating in one appliance. So that would equate to 574,000 units. Uh, so using a simple uh, profit equation, uh, we're looking at Y, which is profit, um, and basically it's the number of units times the, uh, the price minus the number of units times the variable cost, and then all of that subtracting the fixed cost. Um, and so that total comes out to a profit of 1,418,900. Um, the second scenario was using um, a quarter percent of the, um, the number of households using the coding. Um, so that would come out to 287,000 units. So using the same equation, plugging in the number into um, the equation up there with the, the same uh, price, variable cost, and fixed cost, that uh, number is actually come out to a loss of 690,550. Um, and if you remember, the break-even cost was a little bit higher than the, uh, the number of units there. So you can see an example of how the uh, number of units um, being lower than that break-even number results in a loss rather than a profit. So the weighted equation is basically, um, it's pretty simple, um, it just as an estimate, but uh, basically 50% of the um, total from the first scenario plus 50% of the total from the second scenario. Um, and so here we have um, 0.5 times the first profit of 1,418,900 um, plus uh, 0.5 times the loss of 690,550. Um, and so when you do the addition and multiplication there, the total number that comes out to is 364,175. And so that's the profit for this estimation. The touch temperature coating, while originally designed to limit the transfer of heat on off-the-shelf electrical equipment in space, has many potential uses. Its properties present logical applications for two thriving industries, appliances and automobiles. While some limitations exist, minor adaptations could be made to allow it to serve multiple purposes. This technology would be able to provide the added benefits of safety and convenience at a low additional cost to the consumer. After running several different financial analysis, we have determined that this technology could be a useful product that provides manufacturers with an excellent return on their investment. Because there is no patent on this touch temperature coating, opportunities are ample to find new applications for the existing technology or tinker it and apply it to new products in varying industries.
please let us know if you have any questions.